The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Obedience is extremely important to us. Our obedience doesn't change God. But our obedience is extremely important to us because it allows God to release into our life the things that we really want but many times don't have because we haven't shown that we're mature enough to handle them. How many of you know that if you really love your child, you won't give a 10-year-old a car and tell him to go for a ride? <laughs> so many times God has to wait on things that he'd really like to give us because we just need to grow and mature a little bit more. Let me tell you that condemnation is not the answer to disobedience. I disobey, I feel guilty and condemned. Two or three days I get over it, do something else, feel guilty and condemned. Anybody ever been on that treadmill? So condemnation is feeling bad about your sin is not the answer to sin. God never asked you to do that. What he asked us to do is grow up and mature and let him work in our lives and let him touch things and gently deal with us and, and give us the grace and the strength and the mercy to move on beyond them, to do what he wants us to do and to not do what he doesn't want us to do. The only answer to disobedience is obedience. Condemnation is not the answer to disobedience. Obedience is the answer to disobedience. Amen? Now, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. You're behaving quite well. You actually act like you think you might like this. <laughs> See, <laughs> thank you. See, I know, I get it. I know when I start something like this, right away everybody's thinking about these certain things in your life <laughs> that God's already had his finger on for a long time. <laughs> and you've been acting like you don't hear. <laughs> so now he sends me in here to pound on you another way. <laughs> you might as well just go ahead and get it because God's not going to leave you alone. God's grace will find you wherever you're at, but it will not leave you where it found you. Do you understand me? Wherever you're at, there's no pit so deep that God's grace can't find you in that pit. And he loves you completely, perfectly, and unconditionally, but he loves you so much that he is not going to leave you alone. If you think God is going to leave you alone, you are wrong. And whether he sends me or another me or another me or whatever he does, he's determined to work with you so he can work through you. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. All has been heard. Now this, you know, this is the end of the book that Solomon wrote. And you know Solomon was supposed to be the wisest man in the earth but he ended up doing some really dumb stuff. So I don't know, maybe he had a fat head and a lean soul too. <laughs> he kind of acted like it at some times. So he tried every way in the world to be happy, everything. Money, houses, sheep, goats, whatever made him happy back then. Concubines, wives, you know, on and on and on and on. He bought himself everything. He built swimming pools. I mean, he had it all. Still wasn't happy. So now watch this. This is the very end of the book. All has been heard. The end of the matter is this. Fear God. Revere and worship him. Knowing that he is, number one, God is. Everywhere we are, God is. He sees everything. And keep his commandments. For this is the whole of man, the full original purpose of his creation, the object of God's providence. I love this. The root of all character, the foundation of all happiness, 
and the adjustment to all inharmonious circumstances and conditions under the sun and the whole duty for every man. Now, I mean, I could make a four-part series out of that one scripture. I mean, he says, obedience is the root of all character. What is character? It's the way you are, the way you respond every time, every time, every time, every time. God has awesome character, and he wants to build his character in us. And the only way to have that character developed in us is through obedience. We see what God wants us to do. We do it. It changes our character. He says it's the root, the source of all good, godly character. It's the full duty of man. But just to keep it on a practical level that I know you'll like, it says everything in your life that's out of harmony, that means anything in your life that's wrong, the answer to it, is obedience. Just that simple. You know, you don't even really have to go get five years of counseling. I mean, you can if you want to, but I can save you a lot of money. Just by simply telling you, hey, you know, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. You know, some people need to get some good counseling. They need somebody to unravel some things in their life. I'm not trying to be silly but I am just saying that a lot of times we opt to go get counseling for 20 years rather than just doing what the book says don't be the kind of person who got hurt 50 years ago and you're still looking for somebody to feel sorry for you all the time so you don't have to just get on with God's business and be what he wants you to be love you love you love you Ephesians 2.10, wonderful scripture. For you are God's own handiwork. His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born again, that we may do those good works which God predestined and planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them. Who does the walking? We do. <laughs> God has prearranged for us to have a good life. He's made everything ready. We're born into that good life. Now we walk in it, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. So God's got a good life for all of us. He's a good God. Jesus came that we might have and enjoy our life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Please look at obedience in a new way. It's the pathway to the good life that I want. It's not God trying to take something away from us. It's not God trying to give us something hard to do. It's just him teaching us what's going to work and what's not going to work. What do you do when you have children? You spend all their young years trying to teach them how to not get hurt, how to not do things that are going to be dangerous to them, how to have the best life that they can possibly have. And that's exactly what the Lord's trying to do for us. He's trying to teach us how to have the very best life that we can possibly have. God does not want you to be upset and frustrated and full of anxiety and worry and misery. He doesn't want you to be angry and bitter and resentful. He wants you to have peace and joy and righteousness and a good social life and plenty of what you need to take care of all your needs. He wants you to be able to reach out to other people. He wants you to have nice things. But it's not going to happen for us just because we go to church and have a bumper sticker <laughs> and have some Christian jewelry <laughs> and the t-shirt and whatever, you know. Oh, Sister Joyce, I've got all your books. And sometimes if I'm around them very long, I think, well, you obviously haven't read them. Yeah, that's our problem now. We, we're proud of our big Christian library. Man, we got it on Facebook, and we got it on Twitter, and we got it on our telephone. I mean, I, my telephone the other day was reading scriptures to me. I mean, it's, I mean, I got this little thing. You can just pull up scriptures, and then you can hit a thing, and it'll talk to you. And man, it's just, there's no excuse for anybody today not knowing the word. My telephone preaching to me. Amazing. But you know, we have to be very careful 
that we don't think, now listen to me, please listen. We have to be very careful that all of that, that we understand that all of that does not equate into true spirituality. No, you didn't get it. You can tweet and Facebook and dial in and dial up and have your phone talk to you and have all my books and all the CDs and we just have to be very careful that we don't just have all this religious paraphernalia all around us and be deceived into thinking that that The only way that we know that we've got anything is to look at what we're doing. <laughs> Amen? I don't want to spend the next 30 years going from town to town asking people how many have known disobedience in their life and they're just putting up with it and having every hand in the place raised up. And you know, you know me, I love you guys. I'm doing this because I love you and care about you. I, this is not about trying to make you feel bad or condemning you. It is about getting on with God's business. Amen. I have never preached one place on forgiveness or strife or bitterness, never, not one place ever and asked people to stand up at the end who needed to forgive somebody. Never had less than 75 to 80 percent of the whole congregation get up. Never. And I, I mean, I don't know what to say other than we just got to grow up. Every single one of us just needs to make a commitment, get it on the altar and say, God, I'm not here just to make me happy and to live according to how I feel, what I want and what I think. Let me ask you a question. Are you dating Jesus or are you ready to get married? Do you just have a little date every Sunday morning? A little one hour date? You know, we don't, we don't want to put up with no long church services anymore. Well, how, how long is this going to last? What do you care as long as it changes your life? So what if I'm not done till 9.15 or even 9.30 tonight? What do you care? That's still earlier than what time you used to go out. <laughs> we need to rejoice just to be able to hang out with other people who love God and just to be in this atmosphere. Ooh, I'm having more fun than is legal. <laughs> you know, God asks us to do a little something like have a decent attitude. The Bible says renew your attitude daily. <laughs> Let me read you a couple little stories about attitude just to get my point across. Consider the experience of Sidney J. Harris of the Chicago Daily News while walking one evening with a friend who was a Quaker to get a newspaper. The vendor was discourteous and cold as he made change, but Harris's friend remained polite, gave him a warm greeting as he left. How many of you know that's exactly what God's asking us to do? Three people, I'm, I'm encouraged. <laughs> How many of you know that the Bible does not tell us to treat other people the way